Hello everyone. This is Tanay Kulkarni. I'm a technical consultant working with Bentley Systems. In this video, I'm going to show you how water jumps can be connected to the SCADA server and how the SCADA sensor um, data can be pulled inside water jumps to map it against the hydraulic model elements uh, to, to get an understanding of the real time conditions or the historical SCADA data against the model data. So this is a hydraulic model and I have a source to the north. Here is a tank, right? I have added a Bing map uh, as a background aerial image. Uh, so water gems has got a feature which is SCADA element. This element can be associated to a hydraulic element inside the software. For example, as you can see over here, this is the SCADA element. And if you can notice the dotted line uh, referring to this tank. So if I double click, it will open the properties of that SCADA element. And if you notice, I have associated a model element to this SCADA element, which is a central town tank in our case. So that is why you are, you are able to see a dotted reference to that model element. And I can associate our, uh, the, the, the field attributes. For example, the field or the attribute that is going to be um, reflected is the water level inside that tank, right? And, uh, and I can also have real-time signals. So this is how you uh, basically um, add a SCADA element and associate it with your hydraulic model element. Then comes... Uh, the point of importing the SCADA data, the SCADA configuration, and uh, associating that data to these SCADA elements. So here you, under SCADA Connect Simulator, you have a tool SCADA Signals. Now you can set up these signals from different data sources. For example, it can be a database file. It can be an OPC hydraulic source, uh, sorry, historical source. It can be OPC real-time source, or it can be a SciTech server uh, from which you can directly import SCADA data. In our case, it is a real-time source, which is coming from a live server. And if I go and click this edit data source, it will show you all the configurations that I used to set up this uh, SCADA signal. So if as you can see over here, it's an OPC server and Capware Cap Server X version 5 is the server that I'm using presently. And this server has got these all these signals out of which the signals that are useful in this model are located in device one and real time. So as you can see, I have specifically selected only those signals which I want to map on this hydraulic model. So I want to map the real-time junction pressures, the real-time pipe flow, and the real-time tank, uh, tank levels um, in this hydraulic model. So I click OK. You can also set up the units if you wish, uh, if there are different, if you're working in different units. Since this model was built in SI system and since in India we use SI um, metric system, so I have set it as per our convenience. I hit OK. And now if you observe all those SCADA signals that I selected, I checked in the uh, in the device are now appearing over here. So if I click, if I hit refresh, so if you can see the timestamp is changing and so is the pressure values. If you can see here, see notice these values, right? So I am success. I have successfully set up the SCADA and the, the uh, SCADA signals and the quality of those signals is good. I click OK. And now let us mention or uh, arrange those signals 
as per their attributes. For example, this SCADA signal will be indicating the real time tank level. So all these signals out of these, I'm going to select channel to real time tank level since it's indicating a tank level, right? So I select this. And if you notice here, the real time signal value is appearing over here. Now this is how I can do it for, uh, this is how I have done it for tank. However, same way you can, just let me uncheck the background. Same way you can have a real time signal value for junction. So this is the junction. This, oh, let me hit compute. All right. So this is the hydraulic model, I mean the hydraulic uh, or the model value of that junction for pressure, 24.91. However, the real time value is 21. So you can see that there is some difference. The model, uh, you know, is indicating 24, 25 uh, meters of H2O pressure as compared, to, uh, on the other hand, the real time value is around 21, which is coming directly from the SCADA sensor. Now, if I hit refresh element symbology, it's going to refresh. See, the pressure has increased by now. And you can, all, you can, you can have a real time information right into your hydraulic model. And so, you, can you do it for, for pipes? For example, the real-time pipe, uh, sorry, the hydraulic model pipe flow is 201 liters per second. The real-time pipe flow is only 57.5 liters per second. Right. So this is how you set up the SCADA signals and have your SCADA uh, OPC, uh, sorry, sorry, server values inside your hydraulic model. Now this information this the knowledge of what is happening in real time can be consumed by the modelers to understand if this is the boundary condition at present what should be my you know what should be my how the operations should be uh, in the future for example let me now take you to another tool which is skeda connect simulator now this tool, what this tool does it is it imports the real time information, boundary levels, boundary conditions, and it feeds that information or that data to the hydraulic model and then hits a compute to understand how the model should behave if these are the given conditions. So if I go to configure, if I hit import initial settings, and if I say real time, hit OK. So it's going to come. It's going to change See, imported one. It's going to change the real time. Um, it's going to replace the model tank level with the real time tank level. And if I now compute it, the results will then be for with the new tank levels. For example, if the tank level, if the tank is full, whether the pump should be on or off, that is what the model is going to show me. Now, I can export this information instead of uh, instead of having this intelligence just restricted to hydraulic model. I can export or export this in intelligence to the operators who are actually operating on field. And most commonly, um, many uh, utilities use HMI, right? Human machine interfaces, which helps the operator to understand whether the pump is on or off, or you know, the, the, the valve is open or closed, the what are, how the tank levels are fluctuating, so on and so forth. So what I can now do, as I compute this model inside water jams, the results can be exported to an HMI. Now this is a template HMI. However, your utility might have their own HMIs created, but the tags can be uh, associated. So for example, this is what needs to be done in the next 24 hours 
with the present boundary conditions so the tank levels would be like fluctuating like this against this time and as it goes below certain level the pump one should start the pressures would increase and so on and so forth right so it is going to indicate uh, everything that is required for the mod uh, for the operator to understand um, uh, for better operations to take decisions for better operations now most commonly there would be some emergency responses that needs to be responded by the operator um, on the fly for example there might be a case when there is a power outage at at any of these two pumps or let's say both of these two pumps and there is an electrical outage or power outage and these pumps would not be functional for let's say six hours of the day beginning from 12 o'clock in the morning right so the outage duration is six hours i click ok so as you notice the see here it has created an emergency response case outage two pumps six hours and it has indicated on the hydraulic model that this there is some problem or outage on these two pumps and now if i click compute it is going to generate results considering those power outages for example take a look here can you see till six o'clock in the morning there are some warnings and some issues that needs to be resolved right for rest of the day it seems okay now these results again needs to be shown to the operator who is actually operating the system so once i hit play or compute here the operator will then understand that okay for six hours in the morning there is no level you know there is no water filling the tank At six o'clock both the pumps should turn on if you notice it the model has indicated that both the pump needs to be turned on the operator might might think that only one pump might do the job however the hydraulic model requires both the pump to be turned on in order to if i go back a couple of steps yes over here and if i show you this see it needs to be turned on so that this much typical flow would be filling the tank and requiring the uh, and satisfying the demands in the system right so and what needs to be done for the rest of the day will also be depicted on the hmi if you notice see the tank levels against time see the pump one turned on right so this is how you need to respond to a condition uh, under emergency situations right so you can have multiple such situations like there is a fire requirement there is a pipe break and uh, you know understanding that you need, you need to do which are the isolation walls that needs to be opened that needs to be closed under any emergency condition right a pipe shut down so this is how the hydraulic model is going to provide intelligence to the operator to understand what needs to be done under a typical emergency response uh, sorry emergency condition so this is how water gems can be used for operations uh, for the operators to have better efficiency better understanding of what's going to happen in the future if the the, the conditions are uh, in a given way at present right so thank you so much for for your time i hope this video helped uh, help you understand how scada connect simulator scada signals and water gems helps the operations or can help the operations um, in the future for, for the future thank you so much